what's going on everybody it's ETA Prime back here again this is going to be kind of a quick one but recently we got an announcement from a company known as TJD about a brand new big screen windows based gaming handheld known as the T10. The company itself TJD isn't new to the tech space they've actually been making tablets and convertibles for a little while now. They're on the uh, lower end side you can actually do a search on Amazon and you'll come up with something that looks sort of like this. Some of these designs are a bit off the wall, kind of like their new T10 handheld, but some people might be into a design like this. And really the main thing this has going for it is a 10.1 inch display. Now I know it looks a little funky here, but they've kept the ergonomics around a seven inch tablet on the controller side of things. That's why, you know, we've got the smaller controllers on the side here with that huge 10.1 inch display, but we've got a lot of information about this handheld and hopefully we can definitely see one in action soon. And taking a look at the specs they've revealed so far, it's not going to be a slouch. They're actually offering two different APU SKUs. This will be powered by a 7000 series Ryzen APU with RDNA 3 graphics. And you can actually check out their website right now. So the official company is TJD, but I'm not sure if they're doing kind of a secondary sister brand known as Meteorish. That's what the website's name is. But as you can see here, we've got the T10 Windows 11 10.1 inch FHD big screen handheld. Looks like they're going to be offering three different colors so far. We've got the white and blue, black and purple, and we've got the yellow and purple. This white with the orange and blue is definitely reminiscent of the Gundam 1X player. I personally like this color scheme most, and there is some RGB here like a lot of other handhelds on the market. But uh, taking a look further down the page here, there's a notification sign up right here. That 10 inch display is going to have a resolution of 1920 by 1200, 323 pixels per inch and up to 500 nits of brightness. 130% sRGB, so it will be a little oversaturated, that's something I really like. 90% DCI P3, 1200 to 1 contrast ratio and a 6600K color temperature. Moving down a bit. Based on the latest AMD Phoenix Point 7000 series APUs, the Ryzen 7 7840U, and they've got another SKU that we'll take a look at down the page a bit. But obviously, since it is a Phoenix Point APU, we've got those 8 Zen 4 cores with a clock up to 5.1 GHz. And given the room in this handheld, since we've got such a huge screen, they could definitely squeeze a much larger cooler in here. They're stating the TDP is up to 30 watts on this unit, the way it is right now. Two USB 4 ports, one full size USB A, high speed micro SD card reader, 3.5mm audio jack, RGB, supports up to 35 watt high performance mode, better thermals and low fan noise. And they could definitely get away with this if they have that cooler set up correctly, because, like I mentioned, I mean, they've got a lot of space to work in here with that 10.1 inch display. Looks like we'll have that air intake here, our air outlet, and they state that this will have a dual heat pipe cooling system in it. Not sure if we've got dual fans, but the way it looks right now, it looks like a single fan design. It kind of would have been nice to have both of these opened up, so the fans didn't have to spin up so fast to move more air over that cooler and create more noise. Hall sensor-based joysticks, hall sensor-based triggers, ultra-long standby time. I don't know who's going to be standing by for eight hours in idle mode, but they're stating up to five hours of gameplay, and I'd say that was with, you know, easier to run maybe indie titles, and two to three hours AAA gaming. Again, just like the cooling system, they could fit a much larger battery in this body here. Plays literally any game. I mean, it's using Windows 11. So yeah, I mean, we've got that RDNA 3 based APU. We can basically install anything we want. And like I mentioned, they've announced two different APUs. The 7840U, which is going to be the highest end model, 32 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabytes of storage, or 64 gigabytes of RAM and 2 terabytes of storage. But they've also announced the 7640U APU, which is lower end than that 7840, obviously, with 16 gigs of RAM and 1 terabyte of storage. Now, obviously, everybody's going to want to get a hold of that 7840U, but if they can keep the price down on the 7640, this actually might be very enticing for some people. This is an APU I haven't been able to get my hands on just yet. I really haven't even seen any out in the wild, but I will take a look at those specs when we get down a bit lower. The SSD is a 2280 M.2 PCIe 4.0 drive, and we could definitely get in here and, uh, you know, upgrade it. Dual 2 watt stereo speakers. It's going to be 890 grams, so it's really going to be on the heavier side. I expected that this would be a lot heavier than others right now. And they've given us a little bit of comparison between the Asus Ally. Now, one thing they haven't listed here is the price. 
because as we know, I mean, it's kind of hard to beat the Allies price and the fact that you can pick this up from your local Best Buy. Now, we've seen quite a bit about the 7840U, but when it comes to this Ryzen 5 7640U, instead of 8 cores, we've got 6, still based on Zen 4, 12 threads, it's got a max boost clock up to 4.9 GHz, default TDP up to 28 watts, it can be configured from 15 to 30, up to 7500 MHz RAM, and when it comes to that iGPU, it's using the AMD Radeon 760M. So we've only got 8 CUs there instead of 12 with that 780M and it runs at up to 2600 megahertz. To tell you the truth, I don't think there's going to be a huge difference when it comes to GPU performance when you compare it to the 780M. You'll definitely notice it in newer AAA games, but when it comes to emulation, this actually might be a really good chip to get our hands on. And I cannot wait to at least get a laptop or something like that to test this out in. They've got a Facebook group right now, and they stated that this is going to be a 60 hertz display. I knew it wouldn't be 120, but, you know, the biggest question here is going to be the price point. If they can get the price point down at least close enough to the ROG Ally, then this actually might sell very well. I know some people aren't going to be into this design, but I'm personally a huge fan of the big screen handhelds. We've got up to an 8.4 inch with uh, 1X and AOK Zoe right now. Having a 10.1 would be really nice, especially if they could keep that battery life up. But going up to this size does have its downsides, mainly the weight of this unit. For instance, the Steam Deck is 669 grams, coming out to 1.47 pounds. The ROG Ally is 608, coming in at 1.34 pounds. And the T10, 890 at 1.96 pounds. So basically, a half pound heavier than the Steam Deck right now, and the Steam Deck is already a hoss. Luckily, one thing we do know for sure about this is it will offer some really great performance, specifically with that 7840U. It's a really awesome APU, especially when it's set up correctly. And, you know, through all of my testing and everybody else's testing right now, we have not had an official adrenaline driver from AMD. Hopefully, soon enough, that'll be released, but we're not exactly sure on a time frame there. But so far, with the drivers we do have right now, we've been seeing some great performance out of the 7840U and the Ryzen Extreme Z1, which is basically the same chip without the AI built in. And the last thing here, pricing. It has not been announced, so we're not exactly sure what we're going to be working with here. Again, if they could, you know, get right there close to the ROG Ally with this larger display, then this might be for some people. But I'd love to know in the comments below, is this something you'd be interested in at the right price point? Or would you rather just pick up a gaming laptop, given that, you know, we've got a pretty big screen here? It's not going to be for smaller-handed people. Now, I know they kind of kept those ergonomics on the sides around the same size as what we have now with these 7-inch handhelds. But that big screen in the middle, kind of sticking out of the top and bottom, might be off-putting to some people. Personally, I don't mind it. I don't think it looks horrible, especially, you know, if it works out really well. If we're getting the kind of performance we can expect from that 7840U with a big, beautiful screen, then I'd definitely be into something like this. But then again, I am a huge fan of these big screen handhelds. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Really appreciate you watching. I'll leave some links in the description in case you're interested in signing up for their email list or checking out their Facebook group. I'm really interested to see one of these in action. Right now, really, all we've seen are renders. And as soon as we can get some images or, you know, some gameplay footage of a real working unit, I will post it in my community section. But definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Is this something you'd be interested in? Are you going to skip it? Or are you just going to wait for the next round of handhelds with a more powerful APU? Let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.